This video will show you how to solve one-step equations that involve fractions. But before we look at the problems with fractions, let's look at ones with whole numbers. x plus 6 equals 10. To solve this equation, we know we want to get this x alone. To get the x alone, we need to do the opposite of what's been done. x plus 6. To undo that adding 6, we need to subtract 6 from both sides to keep our equation balanced. The 6 minus 6 cancels out. We get x all by itself. Over on the right side, 10 minus 6 is 4. 4 is our solution to this equation. We can check that by plugging 4 back in. 4 plus 6 equals 10, and it works. This is an equation that begins with x minus 8. To undo the subtracting of 8, we do the opposite, which is add 8. The minus 8 and the positive 8 cancel out, leaving x, which is what we're trying to get all by itself, and on the right side, 2 plus 8 equals 10. That process is the same process we will follow when we start having some fractions. This equation still says x plus something. To undo that adding, we do the opposite, which is subtracting. It just so happens what we're subtracting is a fraction. So subtract 2 thirds from both sides. Draw your line. The 2 thirds and the negative 2 thirds cancel. You have x alone. Now, to do the fractions, you know you have to have a common denominator to add or subtract fractions. The least common denominator is 6. The top fraction already has a denominator of 6, so its numerator stays 5. The bottom, however, has to be multiplied by something to create this equivalent fraction. 3 times 2 is what will give me the 6, so I must multiply by 2 on the top, giving me 4. Now pay attention, that is a minus sign we are subtracting. 5 6 minus 4 6 is just 1 6. Let's do another. x plus a fourth equals 7 eighths. To undo that adding of 1 fourth, we're going to do the opposite, which is subtract 1 fourth. The 1 fourth and the negative 1 fourths are opposites. They cancel out. We just get x. The least common denominator for these is 8. So the top fraction just gets to stay 7 eighths. The bottom, however, is going to need to be multiplied, in this case by 2, because 2 times 4 is what gives me 8. So multiply by 2 on the top gives us negative 2. We have a common denominator. We're able to subtract. We get 5 eighths. Our equation might begin with a subtraction. So to undo the subtraction, we do the opposite, which is add. And what we're adding is the fraction 5 twelfths to both sides. Like the other ones, we have this set up so that the negative 5 twelfths and the positive 5 twelfths are opposites, and they cancel out, leaving just your x on the left side. We are adding fractions. We need a common denominator. The common denominator is 12. So the bottom fraction gets to stay what it was. The top, though, needs to be multiplied by something to create this equivalent fraction. Now, some people teach this this way. Rather than thinking 3 times what gives you 12, another way to think this is 3 goes into 12 4 times, and that's what I'm going to multiply the top by to get 8. It's the same reasoning as 3 times what? Well, 3 times 4 gives me 12, and that's the reason we multiply by 4 on the top. We want to add these together. 8 twelfths and 5 twelfths is 13 twelfths which is an improper fraction, and in most cases that's acceptable. However, you may be instructed to change that to a mixed number. So to change to a mixed number, remember to divide. 12 goes into 13 one time with the remainder of 1 over that same denominator of 12. Those are equivalent answers. You might see a problem where the x is on the right side, and the problem is going to be solved the exact same way. However, if this bothers you, you may take the entire problem and rewrite it so that the x is on the left side, just like it was in the previous examples, the 2 fifths moves over to the right side, and then you proceed the way it's written. So I'm going to go back to this one in case you choose not to change it around. Add 3 sevenths to both sides because it needs to undo the subtracting of 3 sevenths. So we add 3 sevenths to both sides. We are adding fractions. We need a common denominator, which in this case is 35. If you can't find a denominator off the top of your head, you can always find a common denominator by just multiplying your two denominators together, which in this case turns out to actually be the least common denominator. 
what this needs to be multiplied by to create a 35 is 7. So multiply on the top by 7 and we get 14. What this needs to be multiplied to create 35 is 5. Multiply on the top by 5, which makes 15. We are adding, and we get 29 over 35. This next problem here may look familiar to you from sections on solving equations with whole numbers. This x over 4 means x divided by 4. And if we're going to undo division, we're going to do the opposite, which is multiply by 4. The 4s cancel. We get x. 9 times 4 is 36. Now look at the problem over here. It is almost identical because when you look at x over 4, you could imagine there being a little 1 coefficient in front of x, just like I've written here, 1 fourth times x equals 9. Well, go back to this one. We multiplied both sides by 4 because it was the opposite of dividing by 4. Since I'm saying this is the same problem, I'm going to solve it the same way. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. But I'm going to write it as 4 over 1 because I want to introduce a new idea, and that is this. When you have a fraction coefficient in front of x, one way to solve this equation is to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of that coefficient. Remember, reciprocal means just flip the fraction upside down. The reciprocal of 1 over 4 is 4 over 1. The reason this is beneficial is the 4s cancel, just like they did over there, and we get x. We're going to multiply by 4 over 1 on this side. 4 times 9 is still 36. There's a reason I want you thinking this way, and you'll see in a minute. x over 6 equals 10 is the same as 1 6 x equals 10. Let's solve by multiplying by the reciprocal, which is 6 over 1. So we had a fraction coefficient. To solve this, we multiply by the reciprocal. All we do is take that fraction, flip it upside down. The 6 is cancel, gives us x. 10 times 6 is 60, which is exactly the same thing you would have done over here. You just made it, might have thought about it a little differently. You weren't thinking reciprocal, but you were multiplying both sides by 6. The reason this idea of the reciprocal is important is that sometimes the fraction that you have may not be a 1 over 3. In this case, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 3 over 1 on both sides. The 3's cancel, and we get x equals 6. In this next example, we have a fraction coefficient that's not 1 over something. So the idea of multiplying by the reciprocal will be helpful to us. The reciprocal of 2 fifths is the fraction 5 over 2. As long as I multiply this side by 5 over 2, I'm going to be able to solve this equation. Over here, 5 cancels with 5, 2 cancels with 2. We're left with the x all by itself. Now you may want to think about this as 8 over 1. And when you multiply these fractions, you have two choices. You can just multiply the tops. 8 times 5 is 40. 2 times 1 is 2. And then divide out and get 20. Or if you'd like to reduce your fraction, you can reduce. 2 goes into 2 once. 2 goes into 8 four times. 4 times 5 is 20. So you can reduce or not your choice. Last example, 5, 6, x equals 10. The coefficient is a fraction. To undo this, we're going to multiply by the reciprocal, which is 6 over 5. Multiply by 6 over 5 on this side. Give this a denominator of 1 to keep our fractions lined up. Over here, let's just be sure things really cancel. 6 cancels with 6, 5 cancels with 5, and we get x. I'm going to do a little bit of reducing. 5 goes into 5 once, 5 goes into 10 twice, and then 2 times 6 is 12.